A lot of people always ask me, how do I clean out the machines? Well, here's your answer right here. Shovel. We got this guy right here, we just modified so that we can kind of fly it in here. And I'm cleaning out the lathe so that I can make more room for more chips. And just shovel them out. No, I don't have anybody that does it for me. We have to take care of, <laughs> take care of it ourselves. <laughs> A lot of heavy chips here. We'll just take that thing out to the, uh, the scrap bin out back and dump it. All right, we're gonna dump her. much easier than the trash can method. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that'd be nice. Got a light load in there today. Don't have much in there. I'm getting down to the finishing stages now. I just flipped the shaft back around and we're gonna get it indicated. We got the copper soft jaws mounted to the chuck jaws here. And that's important that you have a, a constant area that all the jaws are biting down on evenly. These, these chuck jaws are very slightly bell mouthed, so you'll get a little bit more pressure in the back than you will on the end of the jaws. That's just how these old chuck jaws are. They've just been put through a lot of use. So just use something like these uh, copper pads or any kind of soft pads to minimize the contact area of the shaft right here. All right, so we got a almost a hundred thousandths to true it up. All right, so we'll start with our low. That's our. This is closest to our low. All right, it's already a little loose. Get that as I'm get that as close as I can to the jaw here. Make sure that ain't gonna hit. See that jaw was loose there. So I'm gonna have to go around both of those jaws are loose. Trying to evenly tighten them. We've got about a thousandths. Twenty. All right, tenths. That's about twenty-one. Twenty. So this one's high. Twenty and a half, about twenty and a half. Okay, we got it split. We're pretty well centered right there. First thing I'm going to do is come into this largest diameter and we're going to clean it up. We're going to clean it up so that we can run our steady rest on it to finish out the rest of our shaft. Not the kind of chips that I like. I hate stringy chips, but I'm using a 432 radius, 432 insert. After turning that center area true, we set the steady rest to it. I backed the center off of it, and then I was showing about uh, two to three thousandths run out on the center right here. So within that, in that relaxed position there, I set the compound up 
and went ahead and retooled the center. We've got a true center now that's true with the turned area there that we're going to run our steady rest on. So now we're going to go in and finish this and this should all be nice and true once we finish the machining. First of a, probably three finishing cuts. I've got approximately 65 thousandths to bring it down. I do that in three stages there, but to make sure that it's running straight, if I have to tweak this tailstock over here to, to get it to run straight, that's what I'll do. I've, I've got it pretty straight now. The last time I had it within one thousandths taper, I try to keep it as little as possible. Got a 431 insert in there. We're running 305 RPM to 10 thousandths feed rate. It's leaving a nice finish on it. Our finished size is going to be eight and a half. I've got one more cut to make. Well, I'm going to make one more cut. I could make it in more, but I want to finish this up. Alright. So it looks like that's 525 and a half. It's a half. Five twenty-five, so we got a half a dial there. All right, five twenty-four and one half. So I do still have one thousand taper there. It's really difficult to get it absolutely dead perfect. We did some work down here on the tailstock here recently because tailstock had to wear it was low so we took it apart and shimmed it to bring it back up to center height so ever since then I've been trying to get it lined back up in the center so we're gonna work with that though and all I got to do is some polishing on this end down here with the belt sander using a fine belt and it'll bring it down a thousand it's really fast so I'm gonna dial in and make my last cut on this journal All right, that was my finished pass. Let's see what we mic out at. All right, that's exactly 8.5. Okay, 8.5. Eight tenths on this end, so I got approximately eight tenths taper. Yep, so big in here. That's not bad, less than a thousandths, but all right. Bearing journals next. I've got both of these journals finished to size, and we're going to go ahead and cut the radius. I'm going to put a 1 8 radius in this corner, this is for your bearing, and then we're going to put a, a 1 16th radius right here. Finish it up right here. I'm cleaning one thousandths off that shoulder. I left it about two thousandths big to be able to touch it to make sure it was nice and square. I've got a zero set on the cross dial here. A little bit of oil just to help improve the surface finish there. Alright, we got that one finished up. 
and we'll move on to this one. Both ends of the shaft here have a 20 degree angle machined on it and it, it's machined back about a quarter of an inch. putting a very light polish on this knocking some of the high spots down of the tool marks eight and a half looks like we made it there I want to get this true and we're running on the same spot that we had turned true for the steady rest and once I get this true I'm going to go down and indicate the center on the other end and uh, most likely we're going to tool it we're going to cut it true because it'll probably be running out a few thousands that's not too bad right there for just setting it in there So after closing up the steady rest and getting it set, I went ahead and rechecked the end. We got it within a half a thousandths out here next to the jaws. And this is on the bearing journal. And hopefully you can you can see that. We got you're gonna get a little bit of wiggle because nothing is absolutely perfect on these old lays right here. That's really close. So all right, we got this running true. Now we want to go to the other end. I want to check the center. So that's what I was thinking. We get a little bit of run out there. I'm going to set the compound on 30 degrees and recut that center true.
Okay, working on the second finish pass for the long journal there, the eight and a half inch uh, journal. After this pass, I'll have approximately 17 to 18 thousandths for a finished cut, and I miked it, and I had exactly one thousandths taper from this end all the way down there. So what I usually do is I try to hit it, I'll try to hit this end on exactly eight and a half, this end will be a slightly larger, just like the last one. You hit it with a bell sander a couple passes and it'll bring it right down. Alrighty, I got all the turning done. Everything finished on size like I wanted it. And I'm just finishing out the radiuses now. I already put the large radius in there. And then now I'm putting a, a 16th radius here and right there. All right, well guys, we got this finished up. All the turning is done and it's it's polished up and ready to go. I've checked all the way down the shaft here with this, the center is out of it and it's just resting on the, the uh, steady rest. And I'm getting less than 1,000 TIR anywhere I go along the, the length of the shaft here. Got it on the, the gear, the gear journal there and I'll show you. Show you the indicators on it there. Less than one anywhere you go. So, lathe part of it's done. From here, I got to go to the boring mill, drill and tap a couple of holes in the end, and then after that, mill a machine to mill keyways in it. We got three keyways to go. We got two holes to drill and tap in the end of this the shaft, just one end. So we'll center drill it, I'll pilot drill it. I'm gonna use a taper shank drill, a seven eighths. Our tap size is gonna be one inch eight. 
So I'm going to use a 7 8 taper shank. I've got a fresh grind on the end of it. And I do that by hand. I use my old general drill, drill gauge. And I grind it until the, the angle is correct there. And the chisel point is centered on both sides. I want to verify that my drill grind is good. I'm getting 877, so it's a good grind there. start with this one inch eight starter tap also known as a taper tap and it will go in this Rome chuck because it holds up to a one inch shank I'm gonna see if I can get it to power tap maybe at least halfway in there and then if it does I can let off of it and just hand tap it the rest of the way I can get enough torque on these, on the chuck, I mean. The spindle is not locked, so it's it's able to pull itself in there just like a quill on a Bridgeport milling machine or a drill press quill, anything like that. All right, it's doing it. Now, oh, there it goes. Chip back. All right, I think that's enough. We'll uh, loosen it. I bet you my 20 in would hold that. My 20 in Jacob. All right, we're gonna get my big tap wrench and power tap it the rest of the way using Armstrong power. Okay, that looks good. I'm not going to show it, but I'm going to run in there with the bottom tap and run that all the way in there. That way, we got plenty of threads. It's uh, three inches deep, by the way. I've been just recording. It's uh, it's first thing in the morning. Uh, it's Thursday. What's the date? August the 31st. This is when Hurricane Harvey has been kind of moving up into the inland, and we're getting the outer bands of the storm. And we got some of the worst ones coming through now. So it's just it's pouring and lots of lightning and thunder. So I was trying to capture a little bit of that. So in case you didn't see it down there, I don't know how well the video got it. We got a travel dial set up. Got a 
to tighten my drill up. We've got a travel dial down here, and that's an easy way to uh, read your cross feed movement there. So the first hole we power tapped with the chuck, and then I hand tapped it. And I've got this, and I've shown it before. This is an adapter that I had modified. It used to be a shell reamer, Cleveland, two and three quarter. It was a shell reamer, and I cut it off. And this one's made for a, a one inch tap. The two set screws drive the square. And you use that to power tap. All right, we'll use our starter tap like before. We're gonna run about 34 RPM. Just get a coat of oil on it. I've got a yellow paint line on here indicating where the very bottom of the hole would be. And I'm, I'm gonna stop before that and then hand tap it the rest of the way. That way I don't risk bottom it out. I think that's going to be it there. The chips are loading up in front of the tap. We got the board mill work finished up with the two holes. So done here. It's time to move down to the milling machine. We got three keyways to do.